In this video, I'll be showing how you can find that stronghold quickly and efficiently. This video is geared more towards speedrunners, but it can also be useful for casual players that just play in a survival world. I'll be talking about the general strategy in finding the stronghold, and then go over some advanced tips. I was originally going to include how to find the portal room easily in this video, but it's already jam-packed full of information, so I'll save that for another time. And I'm sorry that this video took so long to make, but I knew I didn't want to rush it. Now, there are two basic parts to finding the stronghold. Most of your time will be spent on the travel to get to the general area of the stronghold. Then the triangulation will tell you specifically where it is so you can dig down knowing that you will hit it. So one thing you might have asked was, well, how do I know when to stop traveling? How do I know I didn't pass the stronghold a couple minutes ago? Take a look at this diagram, which shows the way strongholds generate in every world. Thought there was only one stronghold? Wrong. There's 128 of them, and they generate in rings. Around 99.6% of all speedruns will go to a first ring stronghold, which makes sense. If you spawn near 0, zero and if the eye points to the closest stronghold, then it will always be in the first ring. The reason this ring diagram is helpful is because we can know what ranges the stronghold can even generate. According to the first ring range, you can confidently travel 1.4 thousand blocks from 0, zero knowing you will never pass the stronghold. There are some incredibly rare exceptions where it will generate closer, but you don't need to worry about those. Now, a common mistake I see a lot of people do is add their coordinates together to see the total distance from 0, zero. One person might travel all the way to 1000, 1000 and complain that they had to travel 2000 blocks, when actually they traveled only 1400 blocks, which is the minimum distance. And it's basic math, the Pythagorean theorem. However, it's hard for most people to calculate that kind of thing in real time, so here are some reference triangles. Now that we know where to find the stronghold, how can we get there quickly? Well, there are a lot of different ways, and I'll try to go over them relatively fast. Pearl travel. If you ever get any extra pearls from bartering with piglins or trading with villagers, then you can use them to teleport across the overworld. Pearls can be especially helpful to get over mountains, which are quite slow to traverse over. Ocean travel. Using a boat or swimming with dolphins is faster than normal sprinting, and over a long period of time, it can make a difference. It also saves time because if a stronghold spills into the ocean, you can skip triangulation, and you also don't have to dig through a bunch of stone to enter the stronghold. On top of that, if the portal room is exposed, you can completely skip wandering throughout the stronghold to look for it in the first place. Horse travel. If you get a saddle from a temple or from a village chest, you can try to mount a horse. Since it's based on luck how fast the horse lets you ride it, you can feed it wheat, apples, or golden apples to speed up the process. You can also check how fast a horse will be by damaging it and seeing how fast it runs around afterwards. Don't feel bad because the horse is literally a piece of code. Nether travel. This is especially common in version 1.16, where obsidian is far more obtainable because piglins can provide it after bartering. Because each block in the nether is 8 blocks in the overworld, you are essentially traveling 8 times faster than you normally would in the overworld. Keep that in mind though, because if you travel too far, then you will end up far past the first ring of strongholds. You can either decide to throw the eye in the overworld to get the general direction of where to go, or you can just build a portal and hope you get close. This way is much riskier, but also much faster, because you don't have to go back to your original portal. Run travel. This is very common in version 1.14, because you need several structures in the overworld. As long as you are traveling away from spawn, you are theoretically getting closer to the stronghold. However, this is also not always guaranteed to work out, because you won't always be traveling in the right direction. The strongholds in each ring are spaced out equally, so you have around 120 degrees to choose from and get lucky. Now you might be asking, well, it doesn't really save time, because you are just rearranging the times when you are traveling to the stronghold, so how is it a time save? And that's because if a good runner gets everything near spawn, they'll have to wait a couple minutes for the villagers to return to work hours so they can start the trading process. Getting better at movement. You can use blocks in a water bucket to optimize how fast you go across the terrain. You can place blocks to elevate where you land so you don't lose the sprinting momentum. You can also use water buckets to quickly climb three block tall walls very easily. Lastly, keeping angle. You might not know what this means and I'll explain later. But making sure that you are accurately following the direction of the eye means that you aren't traveling any extra distance. For someone who is just learning how to find the stronghold quickly, this is the biggest time save. 
The travel is very important, but the triangulation is arguably even more so. If done correctly, you can estimate how far the stronghold is without even being anywhere close. You could also locate it more efficiently compared to the classic, oh, it goes backwards. Oh, it's still going backwards. Oh, now it's forwards. Now it's backwards again. So what even is triangulation? There are two fundamental laws of triangulation, which I'm calling fundamental laws to make it sound really cool and dramatic. Law 1 states that the stronghold lies at the intersection of rays made by two eye throws. Okay, so what does this actually mean? Since the eye always points towards the stronghold, they'll all meet at one spot. So you can assume that's where the stronghold lies. This is the basic idea of triangulation. You need far less eye throws because you can locate the stronghold on a two-dimensional level and not a one-dimensional level. If you keep throwing eyes like this, then you make a kind of explosion with the angles. And an interesting property comes up. The closer you get to the stronghold, the angle increases, which leads to the second law. Law 2 states that angle changes are determined by your position relative to the stronghold. Basically what this means is that if your eye suddenly points in a different direction, it can mean that you're close. It can be helpful to use F3 to get the exact numerical value of the direction you're facing. All you have to do is look at the eye exactly and you get the angle. With only two eye throws, you can actually calculate the distance to the stronghold. So let's assume you threw your first eye and it went around 60 degrees. And then you decide to pearl travel 150 blocks parallel to the x-axis. And then you throw again and the angle is now 95 degrees. And so if you extend these lines, you get a triangle with the remaining angle value of 25. And what we want to know is the d distance to the stronghold, which would be x. So for this, we can simply use the law of sines to help us out. After a little bit of math, we get our approximate value of 307 blocks. And so now you start to see why this is called triangulation. Okay. Of course, this calculation can be done with exact numbers right at the beginning of your travel, or you can just take notice of the angle change at any point in triangulation and estimate for yourself how far the stronghold might be. In fact, top spinners do this estimation all the time, and it's how you can tell on the fly how much you still have to travel. However, both of these laws only apply if you keep your angle, especially law 2, and it's pretty easy to lose it because of the terrain. A lot of times I see runners get like a 30 degree angle, but then over time they go on a 45 degree angle. Diagonals are not all the same. You need to think specifically about where your first eye pointed. Or you can be a lazy guy and just use F3. So the reason keeping angle is important is because, well, one thing, you might be traveling extra distance. So let's say your eye points this way, and instead you just walk like this a little bit. And your next eye throw goes this way. Now, the angle change is very different. In fact, it's like almost a 90 degrees. But it doesn't mean you're necessarily close because you did not stay on your angle. So in reality, the stronghold will be about here, and for you, you would think it was around here. In a more exaggerated case, let's say your eye points this way, and you travel like this, and then the eye points back this way, when the stronghold is actually way over here. Now this is a lot of information and all, but it can be hard to process all of it. So I'll make up some example runs. Runner 1 is close to spawn. He throws his first eye and keeps angle very well and enters the first ring. He throws his second eye and it continues forward. After another 200 blocks, he gets off his line to throw again and it changes angle slightly, so he knows it's close. After another 100 blocks, he goes off his line to throw and it points close to where he was before. Then he proceeds to dig down. Let's assume Runner 2 runs the exact same world and starts out close to spawn. He does all the same things as Runner 1 does, but does not keep angle well. He enters the first ring and throws his second eye. The angle changes drastically, but not because he is close. He throws and travels more and realizes that he made a mistake in initially losing angle. After a while, he finally finds it. Finally, Runner 3 plays a different world. Throughout the run, he travels in one direction in order to get the things he needs for the run. When he throws his first eye, he is already very close to the first ring. So he must be close, right? Not necessarily. Because the three strongholds space themselves out in the first ring, you have around 120 degrees to choose from and get lucky. Runner 3 does not get lucky. His eye points in a direction that is not the same as he had been running. He triangulates like normal, 
Had he chosen a different pathing throughout the run, he could have found the stronghold very quickly. The last part of this video will quickly go over some more advanced tips, both of which actually utilize chunk coordinates, which you can find here on the F3 menu. The 4-4 strat is very common. Once you figure out where the stronghold is, you dig down at chunk coordinates 4-4 so that you can drop down straight into the starting staircase. If you don't know the importance of the starting staircase, it basically just helps you find the end portal room easier. Then there's the 8-8 strat. This is based off of the fact that the eye always points to the center of a chunk at 8-8. So if you're close, it can be very helpful to use the 8-8 strat. If you extend the angle of an eye throw, you can be sure to dig down only in the chunk where it passes through 8-8. Obviously, the closer you are to the stronghold, the more reliable this strat is, but it can be very useful. So that's it for this video. There was a lot of information, and I try my best to make it all make sense. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, join my Discord, or join the official speedrunning Discord for Minecraft. I hope I helped you in some way, so like the video so others can see this. See ya! Okay, so while I was editing this video, I, I found- I found- what is this? Look at this guy! What is that? Oh no!